Pyongyang, January 14, 1907. A group of Korean Christians and Western missionaries are meeting for a Bible study in a church on the outskirts of the city. Halfway through, God begins to move in a powerful way. They knew that the only way to survive was to depend on God. One by one, the men confess their sins to each other, sins of racial prejudice, hate, anger, and jealousy. They knew that nothing was impossible with God, so they called on Him for forgiveness. God answers, and revival breaks out. In the ensuing months, thousands repented publicly, including elders of churches and foreign missionaries serving in Korea. And out of that, they say, they think came the, the work of the Spirit that finally broke out as at Pentecost. Thus began the Great Pyongyang Revival of 1907. In 1907, Pyongyang became known as the Jerusalem of the East. Churches were sprouting up everywhere, and they were growing fast. Prayers of repentance swept across the Korean peninsula. People walked hundreds of miles to attend revival meetings. The spiritual change was a repentance movement. Believers confessed their sins and were born again. The revival lasted 40 years, touching all levels of society, including those in political power. Andrea Lankov is a professor of Asian history in Seoul. Pretty much every single important North Korean communist, or sorry, any Korean communist of the 40s and 30s, 20s, came from a Christian family, with very few exceptions. Even North Korea's dictator Kim Jong-un was exposed to Christianity. His great-grandparents were active members of a Protestant church. In Korea, Christianity was a religion of modernity, modernization, progress, science, technology. But the brutal 40-year Japanese occupation of Korea tested the faith of these believers. And according to eyewitness accounts, Christians were enduring so much persecution, but in the midst of persecution, God was moving in tremendous ways. Japanese forced us to bow to the Japanese emperor. So many of us refused and were imprisoned. Some were tortured and killed. But the more the church faced persecution, the more we grew. By the late 1940s, some 3,000 churches were operating in Korea. Illiterate people began reading the Bible. Missionary schools and hospitals were being built. It was maybe the greatest success story of the uh, American, not only American, Protestant missionaries in East Asia. But today the story of Pyongyang could not be more different. Christians now are routinely tortured, raped, starved and executed. It's one of the most repressive policies in regard to religions the world has ever seen. They are worse than Stalin. They are probably as bad as Mao. They are probably slightly better than Pol Pot. Korean Christians have held prayer rallies like this one, asking God to reunite and revive their nation. <laughs> David Yonggi Cho, a South Korean, pastors the largest church in the world. For decades, he's been preparing teams of young pastors to be ready to share the gospel once the doors open in the north. We are praying that God will speed up the intervention to North Korea. Cho and others are calling on the global church this week to remember those suffering for their faith and to pray that God will bring another revival in North Korea.